Okay, we're gonna get started. Um, today we have Corey Henley with how to speak to lead a youth leadership program. Um, we ask that you put um, your video, don't have a video and to just put yourself on mute while the session is going. We ask that you sign in to the link that I will post in a little bit. It's to put yourself, put your name in for a door prize. We have JBL speakers, some gift cards and some AirPods. And so if you have any questions, can you please just put them in the chat or, um, and we will answer them that way, or you can ask them after if we have time. But if you want to start, you're more than welcome to Corey. You can go right ahead if you want. All right. Thank you, Macy. And good afternoon, everybody. I see, I was kind of running through the, the names on the list and I see some familiar names on, on the list of people who are attending today. And so I went ahead and, and I will tell you this program that I'm, that I'm going to talk about today is one that I had utilized when I was an agent in, in Travis County. And I, it, it had a name, Youth Leadership Program. We would also, we really referred to it as YLP. You know, to the kids, it sounded way cooler if we called it YLP instead of Youth Leadership Program. And, and really what it was, it, it was about public speaking. So for today to kind of grab everybody's attention, I wanted to gear it towards the whole speak to lead. Uh, public speaking is, you know, in the 4-H program is absolutely to me one of the best opportunities we have to help our kids build their, you know, personal development skills, their leadership skills, because ultimately we, we do public speaking in, in everything that we do and in our everyday life. and. And, and whether I think a lot of our youth realize it really fits into pretty much every, every project that we do in some shape, form, or fashion. And so, move on to my next slide. So basically, 4-H public speaking opportunities. These are some of the ones I, I, I jotted down. So we, we have opportunities for our youth to speak in, in club meetings. Uh, we can also say council meetings. Uh, clinics and workshops when we have youth who are uh, some of our presenters and a lot of the workshops are our officer roles which that kind of goes back to club meetings for the most part or um, ambassador roles we've got a lot of kids who are serving in uh, equine ambassadors livestock water stem healthy lifestyles i'm probably leaving somebody out but you know in those roles like they're doing a lot of public speaking on, on behalf of the program and being um, advocates for what they're um, representing we also have our speech contest so we have kids who do educational presentations and one of the other things is interviews you know right now june is a is a huge month for us uh, for typically um you know of course we did change things obviously since we are doing this this virtually but interviews, whether they're interviewing for, um, you know, we just had last night, they announced the, the youth who were selected for the at-large delegate positions and they did an interview and I believe they did videos and we have council elections that are going on right now. And then we also have promotional videos. So I, I put that on there, like, so as, as you see, we have tons of opportunities for our kids to, to use their voices and to, an, an interpretation and a marketing piece for our program are there and also like I'll ask questions and so feel please feel free to put in the text chat as Macy's watching that are there any other opportunities speaking opportunities that come uh, come to mind when you're thinking about the 4-H program because there's always an possibility that I left some some off not not intentionally but these are just some of the ones that automatically come to the the top of my uh, my mind when I when I think about this so basically what we what we did is um, in, in our county we were looking at you know things that we could do and you know so I wrote up here what is YLP and and why why do it and the, the youth, the YLP is actually the Youth Leadership Program, and it is a, it's a program that's really designed by the Toastmasters. So has anybody heard of, has anybody done Toastmasters or been part of one of their programs before? I 
and y'all can type in the text chat if you if you have. Um, I know it's one of those things like a lot of their timing. Um, I've heard of them, okay? So we got somebody who's heard of them. So I mean, wish we had more actual coaching and workshops specific to public speaking. Um, oh yes, Clover campaigns at Tractor Supply. Good, yes, that I forgot about those. That we, we do have a lot of kids that are stand, that do participate in marketing um, opportunities and promotional. Uh, and so, really, where we went with this is is Toastmasters. I will be honest in that my mother made me go to Toastmasters as a child. I went kicking and screaming. It was not my thing. It was it was my brother's thing. He loved it. Um, he loved to speak to people and he loved to talk. And so, it was it was really a great thing for for both of us. And so we would go. We would go at night and we would go sit through these meetings and we would learn to to speak before before other people. And so, uh, so basically, Debbie answering that question right now. What is Toastmasters? It is. It's really geared towards adults, and it is an opportunity where there's, they open up for people who want to enhance their public speaking skills. In our larger areas, we're going to have, um, there's more opportunities where there are going to be Toastmasters groups, and these these adults get together. That It's kind of like a, it's a club, and they get together at night, in the morning. Sometimes there'll be groups that meet at 645 in the morning, and a lot of times six or seven at night and they they learn to, to enhance their speaking skills whether it's feeling comfortable um, speaking off the cuff doing impromptu type opportunities and learning to put together a speech and, and writing one and a lot of times companies might send their employees to to go through a toastmasters program if, if it is available and like I said, so as a youth, my, my mom made us go because she wanted us to make sure that we would work on our public speaking skills and and, and we did everything in 4-H. We did back in the day, it was method demonstrations. Now we call them ed prezes, um, educational presentations. And so we were really big on that in our family. And so we, we did that and that's where I kind of looked at it with um, looking at that, you know, so that's what the youth leadership program is. They have a program geared towards youth that they'll do in the in the Toastmasters program that uh, they're volunteers to for them to grow kind of like in our organization where our kids will do different uh, officer roles and advance on and you might do something at the county, but then you might be on the district level or the state level. Toastmasters is very similar to that and that they have opportunities to advance in, in their program and they will um, to become certain titles within that program they have certain other things that they have to do and, and working with the youth leadership program is, is one of them and so we built that partnership in, in Travis County and I saw that Melanie Michelson just got on who after I left Travis County she had started working there um, as well and she had continued this program on while we were um, after I left and so it's, we turned it into a three-day seminar slash work, workshop for the kids. And like I said, we called it YLP because public speaking camp just did not sound exciting to enhance the kids and want to encourage them to come during summer to, to do this. And we would um, basically, we did speaking stuff for, for three days and we had fun. We, we played games and um, and the kids really enjoyed it. And what I liked the most is I was able to watch these kids come in very timid and unsure about how they felt about public speaking and where their skill level was, and then just come out of it a, a whole new person and where I would see them go and uh, and do things more in, in our program and in, in and at school and with other organizations to utilize the skills that they learned with, with this activity and, and event. And so really how it started was it was an emerging issue that we that we saw in the county. Um, I worked with our program area committee and, you know, a lot of them said, you know, we, we want the kids to build their public speaking skills. They um, were they need to be stronger in that. This, this is how they interview for jobs. This is how they interview for scholarships. Um, in some cases, it might be you know a college or university that they're trying to get into a specific program and they mean they may need to interview and and a lot of it was just learning to 
to function as you know in general with, with talking to people so it, it was a need or emerging issue in the county as far as the youth side of things that we looked at and since like i said since i went as a toastmaster as, as a youth i was like you know what i'm gonna we're gonna go this so i went to toastmasters.org and granted being in austin there were a lot of opportunities and so i just contacted somebody in one of the first clubs that I that I saw and and contacted the gentleman and really how it worked out was one of the longtime Toastmasters there in the county actually served on a committee with Rodeo Austin. So right off the bat we started kind of coming together through a, a common bond of he felt that she would be a perfect fit to work with us because she already had a passion in working with youth. And because of that connection to to that livestock show that involved youth as well so we built that partnership back in 2004 2005 and um, i know it was going strong through 20 uh 2018 2019 and so and then she even became more involved in our program in, in general as as well and so that was really the beginning of it we started out as a, as a traditional type Toastmasters where the kids would come once a week and the youth leadership program they they have a whole curriculum for it they have a little book that the kids get and they follow along and, and like I said it's designed over an eight-week concept for about two years we tried it that way but as you guys can probably imagine that a lot of times they're um, getting, getting the retention rate was kind of a challenge there you know they would they would miss a week and something would come up and it would be their turn to give their speech but they weren't able to make that week and you know so we were seeing that maybe four kids would show up or you know five six whatever so as we started to do more digging and and and, and brainstorming it came up it came about that like let's try this as a camp let's try this as a three-day thing much like we would do a food camp or a fashion camp or stem camp or you know uh, whatever we were doing it was just going to focus on public speaking and so i'm going to go back to the text text chat right quick melanie did type in that the program is still ongoing and she's working on doing one with them in Bastrop this fall. And so uh, so even that same volunteer, when Mel Melanie did move over to Bastrop over in the last year, so she's taking that program and, and, and moving it there as, as well. And that's what's great is that it, it can be structured to fit kind of how your, it may, it may, how it may need to fit in your county and every county is not gonna function the same. So that's what I like about it. So like I said, we, we we, we structured the changes to fit to fit the needs of the county after we moved to doing a camp um, it was in the summer and they you know then we had faced some of the challenges how, how do we work some of the other things like you know the kids eating during the day you know fitting that in and not being just sitting there the whole time and so we worked through that with our planning committee um, worked through all the different challenges of um, factoring in the time frame of how long we would run because with that curriculum, there's certain things that you, you have to hit on. And uh, we wanted to make sure we, we got all of that in into the event. Plus they also, they give speeches. They write speeches during this three day time frame, and they do extra little fun impromptu type things. So we would promote the event. Um, then we would have the actual event. We, the kids would evaluate themselves uh, before their before they started, after they after they ended, and then we would have a graduation at, at the end and, and invite the parents and anybody they wanted to invite to come to come listen to them give their their third and, and final speech. And um, what was I guess one of the coolest things about it was in the kids that came, we'd have kids that come for five years straight. And, and we didn't really change the event all that much um, because it had the same concept year after year. We would, you know, kind of change things up a little bit. But the fact that they still wanted to come and still perfect their skills was really a cool thing for us to see. And that, and that it was a very, um, you know, it was, it was a useful program. It was relevant and, and, and that they enjoyed it. And they always asked. That was probably the one thing next to when is our county show was, well, are we, are we having YLP this year? Are we, are, you know, are we going to get to do that? 
this is just a simple flyer that was that was put together talked about um what what it was when it when we were going to do it where it was located um the other thing is this was free um to our 4-h members we didn't we did not charge anything uh, we were very fortunate that our volunteer who helped with this did um you know, didn't, didn't charge anything. You know, she, like I said, she became one of our best volunteers in, in the county. And so, and let's see, I'm gonna go back to Melanie's thing. She said that, yes, and over the time, some of our older kids, they would lead some of these sessions. Um, so if they'd been coming for several years, we would, we would start to divide up some of the, the pieces of the section, which I'll show you the agenda in a, in a little bit, in a, the next slide that where they were able to teach it. So not only were they still getting experience to enhance their own skills, they were then also getting those leadership skills to, to lead and, and to have those um, primary leadership roles to add into their, to their record book. So this is the actual um, agenda, kind of the, the topic of, of what they would, what they would do. We would start off. I mean, every morning we started off with our pledges. Um, that's a, a typical Toastmaster thing. They do start off in the morning with, with pledges. Um, they were not used to the 4-H pledge, so that had to be added in and, and making them realize, okay, yeah, we do this. This is a big part. This is our world. So we would do that. We always talked about the rules and the regulations and covered facility, you know, uh, guidelines and, and gave a, an overview of the program and just the agenda. We, we always included get acquainted activities. Uh, we always made sure there was something fun. We, we would take breaks and this is also a great opportunity to have some of your older kids lead games and, you know, and, and include that in. Breaks are necessary. We have, we have to have that, but basically, you know, and then it kind of goes into the whole, concept of their program. They evaluate their present speaking abilities and we created our own evaluation because I needed it for my needs, for my evaluation purposes as an agent. And so I created that and they, they learned about, we also had officers within this. There somebody, they, it, it was sort of like a club meeting there. Um, they would uh, have a little, have a chairman, somebody would um, take notes and be the secretary and, you know, just different roles. So it, it was really wasn't any different than what we really were, were doing on a regular for each kind of club meeting concept. And so they would do nominations and elections. And then we kind of got into an introduction of public speaking. And so I, I would say the, the first part of it is not overly exciting because it's just general base, basic information. Um, and then they, they'd be given an assignment. So, I mean, their very first day, they, they wrote a speech and they would call the meeting to order and um, they did energizers. We did speech evaluation basics. And one of the things that we really work to make them understand is like, you know, truly evaluating one another and that and, and learning to, to give proper critiques. And because, in, and I'll tell you in Toastmasters, if you've been to one of those, they are very honest um, with their, with their critiques. And we wanted the kids to be honest, but we also wanted it to be in a, in a positive manner and in a way that is helpful for them to uh, enhance and, and grow their grow their skills and so their favorite part was the impromptu speaking uh, you know table topics and this was and this is where what I like and this can be incorporated this piece right here can go into all your club meetings uh, whether you're doing a roll call and you ask um, instead of just having the kids say here have them stand up and say something about themselves. Now, in some clubs, I realize that will not work. The club is a, there may be over 50 or so members. And so that just would not be feasible. But if you have a smaller club, a great way to get the kids used to public speaking is, is to make roll call a little different, a little more fun, um, allowing them to introduce themselves. And, you know, a lot of times we always ask our new people to introduce ourselves. Well, that that's great. We got to know the new person, but is the new person getting to know all of our current people? And so it never hurts just to kind of add that little impromptu part in. It doesn't have to be anything, anything big. It could be, you know, 
you know, telling us what your, what your favorite fruit is or your favorite forage project and your favorite color and, and why. Um, and that's really what they did in their, in their table topics. We would start off with simple things um, because they're timed on these and the, the book goes through and it little curriculum with YLP goes through the whole process of how much it, um, how much time they get and trying to make it past 30 seconds you know, and then trying to make it past a, a minute. And so it, with, without doing a lot of ahs, ams, ums, so's, ifs, buts, you know, the kids love to count those. And that's where we wanted the kids to really learn to kind of think on their feet because that's what our interviews do. You know, you can prepare for an interview, but ultimately you have no idea what you're going to be asked when you, when you go into that interview. So that's why the impromptu speaking and the table topics is, is a huge part of the program. And, and I probably a lot of times put more emphasis on that piece of this program just because it fits so much more of what we do in our 4-H world with, with interviews and uh, with uh, promotional things when you're asked, you know, a lot of times, especially those who may be in the livestock world, you know, you're, you're there with your animal at a show and a news group comes along and they want to randomly interview you. And, and being asked to do that can, can kind of throw you off. And so being able to, to speak on, off, on your feet and, and just give your explanation of what you're doing there and what, what you do with your project and the importance of it is, is, is important because they are representing, you know, themselves, their family and their club, county and organization in general. Again, another break. And so participating in discussion, uh, we, we talk, uh, we talk about that. And then we also give them each day, we gave them time to develop their speeches and their, in the beginning, the concept was with that Toastmasters, they kind of give you a speech idea. But over time, we had to learn that we had to kind of bring it back to the 4-H world. And so we might tell them that we wanted them to do a, a speech with like a demonstration where we wanted, the, or maybe they could illustrate something to us where they would also have to bring a prop and, you know, they would really get into it and they might create a whole poster or um, they might teach us, uh, the, the, some of the great ones where they teach us how to make like their favorite dessert, like cupcakes or something like that. And they would bring the stuff and show us how to make it and go through the steps. And, but then they also brought cupcakes for, to, for everybody to share with everybody at, at the end of the, at the break time and, and whatnot. So, so any, any questions yet that you guys can think of? I know Melanie's adding some stuff in to the text chat over here. So I'll go back and let's see. What was the link for Melanie? I'm not going to go click on it. Oh, that's the link for the um, check in. Oh, the check in. Oh, okay. I can send it again. Oh, okay, there. Uh, okay, so then uh, Melanie talking about table topics also help some of the kids who were who were new bond with some of the others. That's, a, that's an excellent point. Uh, a lot of times, you because know, it was open within the county, and depending on how large your county is, some of your kids may not know somebody you know who lives on the west side because a lot of you know sometimes just a lot of your kids who participate in certain things may come on the east side or north and south or or whatever, and so that really was a great way for them to to get to know each other and it be in a in a fun environment and um it, where it didn't have to be it wasn't serious all all the time because we, we definitely had to make this fun and exciting for them and the other thing is we we did open this up to non-4-h kids and so there um, that was an opportunity we have a handful uh, we also would allow kids from other counties to come as well if they wanted to. So that happened occasionally to, to be part of that. And a lot of times this was a great way to bring kids into our 4-H program that had not been part of it. And, and it would, it'd be amazing that, you know, they were, they would come to this because they were trying to fulfill some requirement that they had for an organization at school. And, you know, it was great for us and they ended up joining 4-H. 
So then the next day, uh, basically it's a lot of the same stuff over, you know, we begin our day again. We do, we open that up and then we just get into the, um, the other parts of it. There's different uh, segments where they learn to add in, you know, try to add in a word that you've been given. There's a word of the day. And we talk about organizing their speech and we do more table topics. Uh, they, they give their speeches, they're timed, they're evaluated by their peers. Um, each person is assigned a, a, a person to evaluate. And then we also, we do more with, um, their favorite part is the word of, is the all um counter, because not only did they count the youth, but they would count us as well. And you are more than welcome to count all mine if you're sitting there now thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to start counting all those. It's perfectly fine. I, I do say them a lot and I, I try to focus on not doing that. But it is a, it, sometimes it is a challenge because then you think too much and that's all you, all you do is say all um, or and. I will say one of the things the kids say a lot, they, they do like the word like. It, that ends up in a lot of their speeches and because they, everything is like like this, like that. And so it was, uh, that part was fun when, because it wasn't made out to be like we're picking on anybody because it does really start to make you very cognizant of of slowing down and thinking when, when you're speaking. And and also a lot of times, I think the kids forget that they, they write just as they talk and just as they speak. And I know that for myself, I have to go and reword things. And if I really want it to look good, I send it to other people so they can tell me what I need to fix in my stuff before I send it out or or share it. So it doesn't come out as, I all, as I'm always speaking a lot, a lot of the time. And we'll, uh, we break for lunch, come back, have games, start over. The, the other thing is, is we talk about listening. That's a huge part of public speaking. And, and that comes in with the evaluation. And, and that's really, we were able to really tie in there with the importance of listening and when you're in meetings and, you know, listening to your peers, listening to those uh, public, any of our guest speakers who are speaking before a club or a group and, and really paying attention. And so, because on their, they got their feedback. I mean, we would give their, their feedback at the end of the day and they would hopefully utilize that feedback to then go in and work with their, their speeches and kind of enhance that for themselves. And then at the end, you know, evaluation is kind of the big thing. Um, and gestures that they always had a lot of fun with that. We, you know, some of them, it, we would also video them so that they could go back and watch themselves and watch how many of them were talking with their hands and maybe waving their hands when they talk. And I'm horrible about that. I know you can't see me right now, but any of those you out there who know me, you know what I'm doing with my hands right now. And the ones who pace back and forth when, when they're talking and speaking as, as well. So videoing was a great option as, as well. And so they, they really like to watch that at the, at the end. And then the, the third day, uh, th that's when they would give their, their second speech. We would do more impromptu stuff. And basically on the, the, the second night, they were having to write two speeches because when we did our graduation, they would do a speech for the rest of the their peers, anybody that was invited, their their family, and and, and we would make it fun. Um, we'd have refreshments, and they would receive a certificate at the end, and and then we'd give out special awards sometimes as as, as well. And so that really kind of sums up what we what we did with this, and. You know, and I know that we were very fortunate in the ability to have a, a Toastmaster locally. And we followed along that, that book, that curriculum. And these are just some things that items that, that were needed. Of like time cards, stopwatches, and uh, like I said, the youth leadership program, they have a guide that we utilize. Now that did come specifically from Toastmasters. So that's like, that's something you'd have to get from them. But what I really wanted to emphasize 
with everybody today because some of you may be in a more rural area and not able to get a Toastmaster um, that adapt something like this to fit the needs for you, for, for your county, if this is something you're, you're wanting to do. And, you know, and I think one of the things that we've to definitely learned over the last three months is that we obviously can do things virtual. Do we want to do everything virtual? No. But there are those opportunities that you, you know, there may be things that there's volunteers in the county that they can contribute and be part of this, things that the agents can put together. But ultimately, if with virtual now, and we know we can use it because we have been using it, maybe you're able to get somebody to come in that lives in another part of the, of the state and, and be a guest speaker to, to work with the kids. And so I just want to make sure we don't limit ourselves of like, oh, we, we're, we're rural, we don't have anybody out there, or we can't find anybody. And a lot of times it may be the fact that somebody used to live in an area where there was a lot of Toastmaster programs and they may have moved and somebody may know that because like, and that's why I wanted to make sure I shared that the connection we got was just by me emailing and saying, I work with the 4-H program and that we were able to, to bring it kind of full circle and, and find that unique uh, volunteer to come in, come in and help us. And, and like I said, you know, you can, definitely adjust this to whatever the needs of, of every county it may not even be that you do a full three-day thing um it, it could be a monthly thing it could be something that you implement at your council meetings or your 4-h club meetings there's there's a lot of opportunities out there to really incorporate public speaking into what we do, into what we do uh, this was just the evaluation this was the the post survey uh, multiple ways to do it. Uh, they would evaluate themselves before, and um, even though I put post survey on this, this was actually the before one. A hindsight retrospective post is probably the better one because in the beginning, they all think they're wonderful and they all don't feel that they say ums or ands or likes. And so a lot of times the data might be a little skewed because they would, they would mark themselves really high in some areas when they go back and realize, oh, yeah, I wasn't that good. And now I'm like, yeah, maybe I'm, maybe I'm really not a four on my evaluation. And so uh, different ways to evaluate your, um, your, your program. And then we ask them questions. Uh, how could, um, did you improve in the areas that you listed on your free survey? Um, after participating in the program, how would you rate yourself as a public speaker? And and over time, we'd ask different questions, you know, to get feedback on the program and how to revamp it and, and adjust it. This was the, the certificate that is actually designed by Toastmasters. So we were able to utilize it since we actually had a Toastmaster come in and do it. But you could honestly change your, um, your, your program to whatever you'd like to call it. And, you know, and like I said, change that up a little bit and call it something you need, create a certificate for them at the end. I think one of the biggest things was the whole idea of recognizing them at the end. There, um, it, it was important to do that. With, with the amount of time that they put into writing speeches and delivering those speeches, and the fact that they did that all in three days, and they wrote three speeches in three days, that's really a lot. And so they, they deserve the recognition for that. Some success stories, and Melanie can probably add some more in at the um, after this. But I, I think some of my the biggest ones for me were uh, in 2013. One of our one of the kids who had been in the program several years, he ended up winning the Texas Farm Bureau State Speech Contest, and so it was it's kind of like a proud mom moment. Like, oh wow, they were in this program and they did that. And one of the other ones was in 2014. Actually, these were brothers and they had uh, anybody who was in our organization in 2014. That was the Ignite 4-H theme with um, firework look on it and said Ignite 4-H. Uh, one of the kids wrote, that was his idea. He, that was the year they allowed, uh, one of the years they allowed to give submissions for theme ideas and he wrote a little thing for it and then they asked him to deliver a speech in front of all of Roundup. And so another uh, proud moment there of like, wow, like, and that kid right there 
when he first came into 4-H, he wanted nothing to do with 4-H. He came for the snacks, and he'd tell you that today. And that's why he was part of it. He came because mom made him. And then he just flourished in the program. And, you know, so it was, it, it was, it was a huge deal to see these kind of things happen. Uh, you know, then ultimately we would watch kids emerge from that wallflower to an enthusiastic young adult, uh, achieving things that I would only, only dream of that I would, you know, it's like, Ooh, I'm not going to step out and, and, and do that. And, you know, cause that's not really my cup of tea, but to me, the, and that's why I told Jan, I, even though I've not done this program in, you know, four, four or five years, 2016 was the last time I, I, I did this for me, it was, it was the best thing that we, that we incorporated there because it is a life skill that we take with us and we can carry out and do in, in our daily daily lives and so it, it's just a really cool thing so at that point that is really all i have on the presentation uh, i would i'm more than happy to take any questions uh discuss whatever um you guys would like to Any questions at all? I can email those slides out. I'll talk with Macy and see what's our plan for doing that. And it may just be the fact that I already have y'all's email addresses and I didn't pay attention. Yes, that'll work the best is to just um, email them out. And also we will have the recording of this uh, session soon. So you can go through there. And I see, you can see my, my contact information is on there. Um, you know, feel free to ask questions any any time about this. There, um, also Melanie Michelson, she was in Bastrop. Like I said, she's continued it on and she's still doing it. And, you know, she'll have different views on things that worked as, as well with, um, with you know and, and it also changes from group to group and and i think that was i will say when we first started I, if i said it was perfect oh goodness no um i'd be lying it's it started out kind of rough in the beginning because we we didn't really know what we were doing and and how we wanted to, to move forward with it but like i said the whole the whole six to eight week thing it just didn't work for us it didn't work for 4-h it was um it for me it was the whole not you know the retention rate and and it was just so much of like oh i oh yeah i didn't get my speech done and it's like you've had a whole week what do you mean you didn't get your speech done and really within the three-day concept they really didn't have a choice it's um it, it was there and honestly there weren't there would be a couple of situations where maybe one youth had gotten sick you know how you'll randomly like, get that summer sickness and but for the most part, the retention rate would, I would say, was pretty much 90 to 100% most of the time for the program. So any, any other questions, comments? So I see Phyllis Griffin typed in. So Phyllis, were you doing, have you done it with your crew in Cook County? Yes, yes. Um, and I can highly recommend it if you can get a, our Toastmasters group kind of disbanded. And, but still, I'm gonna try to do it again next year. And they would always limit it to 25, you know, cause they can have up to 25 kids. And they would always send two or three volunteers to lead the classes. But it was just amazing the growth you witness 
in what is the recommended time i forget is it eight weeks ten weeks something it's typically six to eight um <laughs> And as I said, you, everybody functions a little bit different. And sometimes it depends on your people. I remember, I remember one crew, I think they sent us like two or three people mm -hmm. to, to do it. Cause it, I mean, it's a time commitment for them and, it but, is. but for them to, to grow in the Toastmaster world, oh. oh my gosh, they have to, I hate to say the word they have to, but for them to become like a district oh. director or whatever they call it. They have to, yeah, you know, they have to do that part. And so, but overall we had really good people. Now there was one year we, we did have one individual and for some reason, I don't know where I was or something that was going on that I was not able to be there that year, but it was, it was really earlier on after we moved to the three day concept, they uh -huh. weren't quite as youth friendly. Right. <laughs> right. But I love it the way they elect the um, officers, you know, for the group, and then they have to be the chairman, and they get used to, um, you know, introducing each other and applauding, and they go through the whole the whole nine yards. And it was good. And like you commented, they learn how to critique constructively. Does that make sense, each other? Yes, because it is a... <clears throat> what's the the word I'm looking for it, it it's it's a positive environment and that because that's one thing we we wouldn't tolerate and and we we would tell them in the beginning like you are going to be critiquing your peers you mm -hmm. are um you know you're here to lift each other up build each other up and and help each other grow and and, and being disrespectful just wasn't going to happen no and, and it didn't. Um, and, and really a lot of the kids, it, it was neat to see, you know, that they, some of them just never even talked to each other and then they just built amazing bonds and friendships. Right. All right. So anyway. And that's what, you know, so it's kind of speak on like, more on the, the youth friendly component. So like I said, sometimes, I don't think they, sometimes I don't think some of them understand what they might be getting themselves into when they like, oh yeah, like really youth. Um, it, it also, this is geared, I guess we should say it's also geared towards 12 year old and up. Uh -huh. It's, um, and we limited it to 20. I think that, I think you're right about them going to 25. We said 20 just for um, our own purposes to be more manageable. Okay. And, and just because we were doing it on a three day, three day time frame but the anything below 12 it, it's you're gonna have that random kid who is totally ingrained in doing this and you know and they're like oh man they're on fire and, and they're they're all about it but a lot of them if they're if they're trying to send their the sibling just because they need a place for the sibling to go this is not for that no And we have that occasionally, not not too often. Yeah. Thank you, Phyllis, for uh, oh, you're welcome coming in. Yeah. Good to hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good seeing you. Hearing you. <laughs> and I see Arvita on. Lynette, it's good to see some 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 extension people. Hey, Corey. <laughs> Hey, it's good to see people over three foot tall. <laughs> I, I definitely, um, I enjoy, this is Arvita. I, I thoroughly enjoyed your presentation. Matter of fact, I've, I've already sent an email to Toastmasters. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, yeah. Arvita, it's so, mm. <laughs> And I was going to take that link, because I know you're probably getting nauseous as I do this real quick. Um, but we'll see if this takes me. We'll see what it does. It probably puts another screen. I'm even allowed to do this as I move through, but that link right there, uh, yeah, just go click on it. Actually, it's, it's doing some funny things. We won't do that. I'll, oh, maybe it will come up. And just real easy to go in and put in, um, you know, put the one closest to you and see who you can you can find. Like I'll just do. Well, this to tell you, Corey. I don't know, several years. You did it, I think, before you became a specialist. You gave a workshop on this? Yes, ma'am. 
And I mean, I was just on fire. I had to do this. <laughs> And so, you know, and then after our interviews one year for the, our special awards for Achievement Banquet, one of the judges, she goes, Phyllis, we've got to do something. They're terrible. <laughs> and I said, well, because it, it was a young crew. I mean, you know, and so I said, I know. And so that's, I reached out and it just, it made all the difference in the world. Because this one lady who had interviewed, her son had taken it in the neighboring county of Denton. And she said it just made all the difference in the world in his ability to just talk, you know, about to strangers about anything. And so, and you know, anyway. Well, so thank, thank you, Corey. <laughs> and I will thank you, Phyllis. And I will tell y'all, I had to go back. I mean, I don't know at this point, I guess when I started it, I was, I don't know, I guess I was in my thirties. I had to go and apologize to my mother and be like, thank you for making me go to Toastmasters. Because <laughs> so, I know I wasn't appreciative at the age of, of 12 by any means. And so she was like, well, I knew it was the right thing to do. Well, of course you did. You were my mother. So <laughs> yeah. So. But yeah, see, I just put in like, we only have about four here in the College Station area. And um, so like I said, some areas it's going to be a little bit more challenging, but that's why, you know, Try to, you know, build it to what works for you. Um, if you're a 4-H volunteer on here, you know, work with your county office. If they need to call one of us, they can call myself. I'm going to throw it out. They can call Phyllis. They can call Melanie, um, those who've done it. And, you know, get some ideas on structuring it because that, I'll agree with Phyllis, like that was one of the ma other main reasons is some of our older volunteers were telling me that they're like, the kids just aren't speaking well at the banquet and we're at the banquet you've got your you got your commissioner's court you sometimes invite your uh, legislators and you know you want your program to be well represented and so that was kind of another thing is also kind of being pressured to to make sure that the kids had this opportunity to to really just enhance their skills so and it does, I mean, even doing it in the three-day camp that you mm -hmm. had initially set up, it makes a huge difference in a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, I wound up doing it in Bastrop unexpectedly just because we had some Bastrop kids come to a Travis County workshop and it's helped their interview skills like crazy. Like Phyllis said, it makes a huge, huge difference in a lot of different areas. We had a lot of food challenge kids, a lot of food show kids, that their speaking and ability to answer questions improves because they can think on their toes quick, a little bit more quickly afterwards. And it's wonderful. And the kids get excited once they get used to it, too. Yeah. Well, and that was one thing with mine. The, um, the Toastmasters asked me, because when I was arranging it, I said, you know, they all give different types of speeches for different purposes. And so that was like one of the, how they got to know the kids was like, what would you like to be able to give a better speech in? And it ranged from the food challenge team to an educational presentation to their food show speech, you know. And um, so that was kind of cool too. And I think then that way they could, it, it was really real. They could see the benefit of doing it besides mama making them. <laughs> Which is true, too. I think sometimes that little bit of connection to their, their different project areas helps, though. <laughs> yes. And, and mamas out there, there is nothing wrong with making them do it. They'll, they'll no, be no, not at all. Because some growth does not happen inside your comfort zone. Yes. So... Yeah. Well, if you guys, I know we see some people waiting in the room, get ready for the next one. Um, I think Dr. Z would probably like me to finish up so he can get on and get with their four o'clock. So I do appreciate you guys getting on and, and joining us today and uh, listening to the, this presentation. Like I said, feel free to contact me. I'll send out the, the slides and feel free to contact any of us, reach out and, you know, see what we can do to, to continue to grow the public speaking project in, in the state of Texas for our 4-H members. So y'all have a wonderful afternoon.